Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about toxocariasis. Toxocariasis is caused by one of two zoonotic helminths, Toxocara cati, which lives in cats, and Toxocara canis, that lives in dogs, are the two culprits we're going to be focusing our attention on today. These two roundworms are transmitted to humans by several methods. They can be passed through the animal species, they can be found in the soil after the feces are gone, or they can be in the undercooked meat of our favorite edible animals. In humans, Toxocara canis infections are much more common than Toxocara cati infections. This is because of the way dogs do their business, you know, in the park, around a bunch of kids. Moving on quickly, Toxocara has a very complex life cycle. See? Here's an example of Toxocara canis. Eggs are shed in the puppy feces, and after two to five weeks, they become embryonated and infective. Dogs can ingest these eggs, or they can ingest a rabbit that has ingested these eggs. If they do, the larvae get to mature in the dog's small intestine and make more eggs that also embryonate and become infective. As far as humans go, well, we can eat the infective rabbits raw and become infected, or we could eat soil and feces that have infective eggs in it. Granted, you don't have to eat the soil or feces directly. You could be gardening and then reach up and wipe your mouth to infect yourself. If a human does get infected, the larvae will migrate to its favorite tissues and insist. This can cause a severe local reaction. Humans, just like rabbits, are accidental hosts of Toxicara. I mean, they don't want to live inside of us, it just sort of happens. Even though we're not part of their life cycle, they're stuck with us and most of the world. As you can believe, most of the infections occur in humans less than 20 years old, and the majority happen to children aged 3 to 7. This is because they're at that lovable age where they want to stick everything in their mouths to test the water, so to speak. The stuff they stick in their mouths that is of concern for Toxicara is dirt and other... how do I say... Oh yes, that's it. Moving on. Toxicara was first discovered in 1950 due to an ocular finding made by this handsome gentleman, H.C. Wilder. He noticed strange granulomas in the eye. Two years later, live Toxicara larvae were removed from granulomas similar to the one described by Wilder. Toxicara can cause one of three different syndromes within a patient. Visceral larva migrans, or VLM, is the most deadly of the three, and it's still not that deadly. Covert toxocariasis is just a milder version of VLM, and docular larva migrans is the rarest of the three, and also has some severe side effects. The clinical presentation of all three of these syndromes depends entirely on the immune response of the patient and the parasitic load that they've ingested. In most cases, the patient is asymptomatic, and the infection peters out before the patient even knows it's there. If symptoms do arise, it's from the larva migrating through the body. Most of the symptoms are in the lungs, liver, eyes, and brain. VLM is caused by rather high parasitic loads. When the larva migrates, it can cause inflammation to the lungs and liver, as well as the CNS, causing meningitis. Some patients, if you look very carefully, will have subcutaneous migration tracts visible under the skin. If a patient has a severe hypersensitivity to the larvae, death is possible. Death is also possible in a rare subset of patients who have CNS inflammation. Patients will present with symptoms that correspond to where the larvae have insisted. Weight loss, fatigue, vomiting, asthma, headache, irritability, rash, fever, and apatomegaly can occur. In some patients, the helminth infestation can cause chronic eosinophilia. This is part of what causes the abdominal pain, fever, and rash. Treating this with corticosteroids will help alleviate the symptoms. VLM is found in 7.3% of children between the ages of 4 and 8 years old in the U.S. Covert toxocariasis is VLM's little brother. It doesn't have any lethal potential and is much less severe than VLM. The lessened severity in patients with covert toxocariasis is thought to be due to chronic exposure of the patient to the roundworm. Signs and symptoms are similar to VLM but lack in magnitude. Ocular larva migrans, or OLM, has signs and symptoms that are limited to the eye and the optic nerve. This is due to the migration of the larva into the posterior segment of the eye. As mentioned before, this is the rarest syndrome of the three. It is curious that OLM and VLM hardly ever occur simultaneously in a patient. The current theory is that a light toxic load is thought to produce a lessened immune response and therefore the larva is able to more easily access the eye. For the most part, only one eye is infected at a time, 
and usually only by a single larva. The most devastating thing about OLM is the vision loss that occurs over days or weeks. Other symptoms may include a red eye, a white pupil, a fixed pupil, a retinal detachment, or strabismus. As seen by Wilder in 1950, ocular granulomas can form around the larvae and are commonly misdiagnosed as retinoblastomas. Unfortunately, the damage caused by toxocara in the eye is permanent and can cause blindness if no steps are taken. Unlike the other two syndromes, toxocara cati is believed to be the major culprit in OLM. To diagnose any one of the three syndromes, the only definitive test is a tissue biopsy that shows live larvae in it. A tissue biopsy, however, is fairly ineffective since the larvae could be in one of several places in the body. Probably the best test option is an ELISA test. It has fairly good sensitivity and specificity and gives more accurate readings overall than a tissue biopsy. An MRI, ultrasound, or CT can also be helpful in locating granulomas in the body. But once you find it, how do you treat it? The good news is that most Toxicara infections are self-resolving and they fizzle out on their own after a few weeks. This is because we, as accidental hosts, are not fit for Toxicara growth and maturity. They insist on in our tissues and then they die. If a patient is diagnosed with severe VLM or OLM, corticosteroids are immediately given to calm down the inflammatory response. Antihelmintics such as albendazole are a great second-line defense. If you're worried about a granuloma in the eye, it can be removed by surgery or by laser photocoagulation. As of now, no vaccines are available. However, the genome for both Toxicara species we're worried about are now completed, and that may pave the way for new treatments and preventions. Getting infected is relatively easy to do. Only 100 to 200 larvae are needed to cause an effect in the body. Also, depending on where you are, Toxicara eggs are found in up to 88% of the topsoil. Since not much can be done for treatment, the best option is prevention. Washing your hands after you're done playing with a pet and before eating can help out immensely. If your pet goes number two in a public place, clean it up. You can also get your vet to deworm your pets. If at all possible, reduce the amount of time you're in contact with dirt. If you have a sandbox, cover it up while it's not in use. Cats love sandboxes. Now for the real heartbreaking news. I know it's tempting to eat raw rabbit or sheep, but get over it and stick it on the grill for a little bit. Also, begin to start teaching your children not to stick questionable or smelly objects into their mouths. In conclusion, toxocariasis is very common throughout the world and thankfully is rarely fatal. The signs and symptoms are based on the immune response of the patient and the number of parasites ingested. Toxocariasis is usually self-limiting and takes a few weeks to clear by itself. Last but not least, if your child just has to eat feces, make sure it's fresh. If he or she eats the eggs before they activate, no harm will come to them. Here are my resources, and here's a nice picture. Thanks for your time.